Hello, and welcome to my Git tutorial. My name is Won Young, and I will be showing you how I use Git during my internship at Apartment List. Before we get onto this tutorial, I'd like to clarify that I'm not an expert in this topic. I'm sharing you my experiences to help beginning coders get an understanding of how Git could help their personal workflow. If you've ever lost your code or even copied and pasted your code into a document to have a working code available to you, please stick around to see how you can integrate Git into your personal workflow. All right, now let's get on to the video. Some of you might not know anything about Git. Don't worry, I was just like you before my internship with Apartment List this summer. To begin, we're going to go over what Git is. Git is a distributed version control system, VCS for short, that allows you to track the code history and revert back to previous versions as necessary. Like other distributed version control systems, Git does not require a central server. This means that each machine will gain access to the entire repository with its change history, allowing individuals to edit the code base and revert back to previous versions without messing other people's work. In Git, there are four main states that your code can be in. The working directory, staging area, local repo, or remote repo. Repo is a shortened name for repository. To see the workflow of Git, we are now going into detail about the four states. The workflow I'm about to describe is based on the GitHub model where it is convention that engineers use the main copy on GitHub as the remote repository that holds the main source of truth. The working directory is where the code modifications are initially stored. In Git's eyes, the changes aren't yet saved. This allows you to continue making changes without messing up the local main copy. The staging area is where your modifications can be included in your next commit. Any file you created or made changes to can be staged. The local repository is the source of truth on your local machine. It can be used to revert versions as necessary. It also is where you push your modifications to the remote repository. The remote repository is a server-based main copy of the repository that can be referenced as the source of truth by multiple developers. It can be pulled from to ensure that everyone is working with the same code. To better understand these concepts, I will be going through a demo that shows a step-by-step -step of the workflow I used during my internship. In this demo, I will be using VS Code and the GitHub desktop UI. This is the process I found that works best for me, but it might not for you. I found I like the visuals that are available in both platforms during the Git workflow. If this method doesn't appeal to you, I suggest the terminal method. A quick guide can be found in the description below. It was written by one of my mentors at Apartment List. Now, let's get onto the demo. For this demo, I modified the Gatsby Universal Gatsby Starter. I followed the instructions here to download the repository onto my computer and then edited the code to get this outcome. To start my Git workflow, I start by adding the repository to my GitHub. My repository is already on my GitHub. To get to this state, you'll have to do a couple things. First, we're going to commit all your files. Click the checkbox to highlight all your files and create a commit title. Follow this up by clicking the commit to branch button. Then you will push and publish your code to the remote repository. Before making changes in the code, I create a new branch or go to an existing branch. Branches are new paths for your code and they're usually created when dealing with new features. Branches are later merged into the main copy of code. Now that I'm in my desired branch, I will make edits to the code. Whenever you make an edit to the code, you can see how many files are modified by clicking on this tab. As you make changes to the code, I recommend you make regular commits to ensure that you have a working copy of your code. To make a commit, I click the desktop UI and select the files I want. Then I create a title. I occasionally include a description of my changes to allow for more documentation down the road. When I'm ready, I commit to the branch and push to the remote repo. Next, I create a pull request. This is where you can add people to review your code and where you can merge your code to the main copy. To see my code history, I go back to GitHub Desktop. As you and others make changes to the code base, GitHub Desktop will fetch from the remote repo. You can pull by pressing this button. To get an old version of the code, I go to github.com, go to my commits, and download an old version of the code. 
I would like to give a big thank you to my mentor, Lynn, for encouraging me to make this tutorial and Gavin for giving me the original Git overview. Feel free to leave a comment down below on how I can improve my Git workflow and give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. I'm not an expert at Git, but I'm looking forward to growing my knowledge through my academics and career. Thank you for watching!